Hi, this is David Lee Goodman. I'm a real estate agent, property manager, and real estate investor in the Nashville metropolitan area. And today I wanted to do a video on flood zones. Nashville is an area that can flood. We're a very wet environment. We are built around a gigantic river. Um, and there's a lot of cool things about having a big river that goes through your city, but also we have to kind of take into consideration where property lines are. And even beyond that, where other streams and, and where the valleys are and where your property is compared to other properties and where the water is draining and all, all of that stuff kind of goes into – needs to be taken into account when you're looking and analyzing property as uh, your own home or as a investment property. So today I wanted to talk about how do I know if I'm in a flood zone, what is the risk factor that goes into that, uh, how much does insurance cost? How do I even find out if this property is in a flood zone? What does that mean for the property itself? So uh, I want to go straight to some resources that you can utilize if you are searching for property for yourself or searching for property as an investment property. All of that stuff we can kind of talk about and figure out if if this is going to be a situation that works for you or doesn't. Uh, and I would say, just side note, um, if a property is in a flood zone, does that mean that's just not a property I'm willing to look at? I would say it just depends. It depends on your risk tolerance. It depends on uh, many, many factors, including how much insurance is going to cost, when the last time it flooded, uh, how is the property or the house built, all of that stuff I would take into consideration before deciding if uh, this house is for me or not. Because the, the fact of the matter is there are many, many houses in Nashville on the market right now that are in a flood zone. Will they flood anytime soon or have they f flooded in the past? And what was the, you know, that all just depends. And I've helped clients kind of decide that, yes, this is a good house for their situation. And sometimes, no, this house is not going to be something that is a good fit for you. So it just, in my opinion, it just depends. So let's look at the first uh, resource I want to give you, and all these links will be provided. We're going to go straight into the FEMA flood map. So the website for that is nashville.maps.arcgis.com. So this, uh, this map will uh, tell you right away if your property currently, if you're looking at a property, we'll say is in a flood zone or not. Say you found a property that you want to look at. For example, I'm going to put up a property that a client of mine was looking at as a live-in duplex that he was going to house hack in East Nashville. This property had been on the market, has been on the market for 50, 60 days, and it's priced pretty competitive, competitively. And, you know, we knew there's got to be something going on with this property and why it's kind of still there. And... I always get burnt because I'll I you know I'll go you know a month or two without looking at a property that is in a flood zone and then I get lazy and I don't look and then I show up show up to a property and I don't know that this property is in a flood zone because there is nothing about it when I was looking at it that made me think it was in a flood zone. I now realize that that was kind of dumb and it is really really close to the Cumberland River and. That's why it's in a flood zone. Uh, beyond that, this property too is kind of like on a flat lot, which to me is kind of um, a red flag because we we are a wet climate. It rains a lot here, and I want to see that water is draining away from the house when I go look at a property. So when I first went to the property and kind of looked at it, it's uh, at the bottom of a hill, and at the bottom of that hill, it just is really, really flat. And uh, that's what first alerted to me to think about whether this was in a flood zone or not. So uh, just looking a little bit closer, this was the house. Here, I'm going to... This little dot was the house right here. 
and you can see that it's in this blue area. And over here, FEMA's got different classifications for the flood maps. They're constantly trying to update these because, uh, you know, climate and, and weather and patterns do change over time and different perceptions and, I guess, ways of analyzing where f flooding is going to be and that, I guess, technology and the science is continuing to evolve over time. So over here in blue is the most current um, flood map. And this property is well within that, well, just right at the edge of where the flood zone is. So what does that mean for the property? Well, it means that flood insurance is required. And I'm gonna show you kind of what this one looked like. Um, it's a duplex. It's The crawl space is really, really high. So that's a good, you know, almost five, six feet before you even get to the top floor. You can see that this crawl space is really, really tall. So that, that potentially could make it to where it's not as big of an issue. Um, what first alerted me, and we're, it doesn't look like we're going to see it, is where behind the where this person is taking a picture is a gigantic hill. And uh, this bit here is a ditch where water has been collecting for years and years. And so that's what originally made me think, Wow, this this might have water issues or water water drainage issues, and so when we looked it up to see if it was in a flood zone, it is in a flood zone. Um, you know, the home buyer wanted to know what the insurance was go going to cost, and we we quoted that out, and it was only going to cost about a thousand bucks a year to get that done. So he was really thinking about whether or not to do that. Uh, which kind of brings in another tool that I like to use, which is looking at the 2010 flood map. And if you're not familiar with uh, Nashville and our weather activities, to that, the May 2010 flood is kind of the bar at which we look at all floods. It was a gigantic flood, is a 500-year flood that you know was really remarkable and unusually catastrophic to the Nashville area. So uh, when you go to this website, it's maps.nashville.gov slash May 2010 flood. Um, you can see real data of how homes were affected in the 2010 flood. And one thing I, I, I do, you can look at each home and see kind of like how much a home was affected, which is really uh, useful, but I I just click on the uh, a satellite image of what Nashville looked like. I think it was two or three days after the flood first hit, and it's kind of like insane uh, how bad this flood was, right? So if you look over here at this flood zone here, this is the Cumberland River, and you know this is. This is a pretty large distance between this house and the river. Like I was, that's why the river just was not on my radar. Um, like for this house to flood, all of these houses would have to flood first. And if you look at the 2010 map, that is exactly what happened. This is the house right here. So you can see that all of these houses were flooded, um, which is why these houses are now in a flood zone, and maybe in 2010, they weren't. This is a gigantic hill, and these houses are really, really high up compared to this. I mean, it's probably a 30-foot drop from this house to this house because we are a very hilly terrain. So I guess when you're looking for houses in, in, in the Middle Tennessee area, kind of pay attention to where a house is in respects to hills and valleys and drops and kind of where the water is going to be dropping. Uh, and then how close are you to the Cumberland River or a stream that comes from the Cumberland River? Um, and it's really fascinating just to look at this because this is the river here and uh, all this other water that you see is not supposed to be the river. So I've, I've just kind of gone through here before and just to see how, how bad this flood got. 
um, it's it's pretty remarkable. I mean, look at downtown. Just got washed away. So anyway, technology is amazing. So that's how I would look at it. Um, you can also go into, just to find this, you can go to maps.nashville.gov, and that's going to be the one-stop shop to find out anything about a property, what the zoning is, what the property history is, what the ownership history is. There's lots of cool little features um, where you can look at what Nashville looked like from outer space in 1996 um, all the way to 2022. You can uh, look at the FEMA flood zones um, and see, you know, if your property potentially has flooding issues because whether or not you're living in it or it's going to be a uh, investment property, you kind of need to know whether whether or not that's the case. So let me let me do an example of a situation where I think it may be okay. Like, so I've got two clients. We looked at this address here, um, and they wanted to know, okay, what did it do in 2010? Because that was kind of the bar that they were using. And I, I, I think that's a good bar to use because it was such an extraordinary flood, one that we'd never seen. And as you can see, it is underwater. Right. So let me look. Let's look at a property recently that um, was in a flood zone that we were okay with. The client was okay with. So this is the same exact day. This is the property here. This is the same exact day as the other property, but it is dry. Right. So there was no flooding. Uh, that was happening right there. If you go a little bit further back, because there, there is a stream, you can see where there was some flooding or where some water was getting pretty high. But um, luckily, that was not the issue at this particular property. And I think I lost. There it is. So insurance on this one only cost about uh, 1000 bucks as well, and it was a quadplex. And uh, the price was amazing. Uh, we saw some potential for uh, m mitigating some risk about flooding by opening up some drainage pipes and making sure that those were open because that did play a factor for when it did flood in the past. So we kind of just looked at the house itself and and ran the numbers. The property still made sense. It cash flowed, and it was in, a, in an amazing area, area, and the potential buyer chose that decided that this was a good deal and the risk out oh, sorry the benefits outweighed the risks of it even though it was technically in a flood zone um, they were okay with stomaching that versus looking at the other property which was definitely underwater in 2010 and this was something that where the the numbers didn't make as much sense for them as an investment and so ultimately decided they were going to look at other other properties if you're looking for property now for yourself, for your family, for an investment property, um, you can feel free to give me a call or an email. I'd be happy to help you through the process. Or you can use these resources that we're going to give you in this video uh, to search for yourself. I really hope that this content was helpful for you. And be sure to reach out if you need anything from us. Thanks for watching.